Hello everyone, how are you today? I'm Dr. Paramjeet and those who don't know me, I'm a consultant cardiologist at Yashoda Super Speciality Hospital, Nehru Nagar, Ghaziabad, Delhi NCR, India. And this is my channel. Welcome to Doctor Education. Here I make medical videos, simplified medical explanation videos and educate you about health and healthcare problems. So today's topic guys is left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. Many of you have found this word in your echocardiography reports. Many of you will find it eventually. So because this is very common and most of the people who are above the age of 30, 40s and they go for a health checkup and then do an echocardiography, they find a grade 1 LVDD, left ventricular diastolic dysfunction or a mild diastolic relaxation abnormality uh, written, seen on their echocardiography reports. So all these things are basically diastolic heart failure. These are different stages of diastolic heart failure and uh, these are very commonly found on echocardiography reports and many of you would usually go online and look for an answer. What is it? How serious is it? Should I be concerned? Many of you will search online about this topic. What is it? How is it caused? What are the complications? Should I be worried? Will I have complications? What are the symptoms? So guys, today we are going to talk about all these things. We are going to talk about what are, what exactly is left ventricular diastolic dysfunction? What causes left ventricular diastolic dysfunction? What are the stages? What are the symptoms? What are the complications? How you can diagnose it? And finally, how to treat and prevent it. So at the end, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video to all your friends and family and subscribe our channel if you haven't done it already. If you want to know about health and have health concerns, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified about all upcoming videos. If your echocardiography report shows a left ventricular diastolic dysfunction, that basically means that your heart's left part, the basic main left lower chamber has become stiff and it has a problem in relaxation. Your heart is basically a pump and it pumps and relaxes, then pumps and relaxes. When it relaxes, it fills blood. If there is a problem in relaxation, either the relaxation is slow or the relaxation is incomplete, what will happen? A lesser amount of blood will be filled and therefore a less amount of blood will be pumped out. So that may cause problems. This relaxation time is basically called diastole and because there is a problem during this relaxation time, this problem is called diastolic dysfunction. So if there is a diastolic dysfunction, it may lead to diastolic heart failure. Because if this problem progresses, lesser and lesser amount of blood will get filled in the left chamber and therefore less amount of blood will get pumped out to all parts of your body. But this is not all. Think about it, if less amount of blood is getting filled, what will happen to the blood which is actually coming up? Obviously, more and more amount of blood will get backed up inside the lungs because it's the function of your lungs to oxygenate the blood and then put it into the left part of the heart through which it pumps it out into the body. But if the left part is not properly relaxing, it will fill less blood and therefore push out less blood. Therefore, the rest of the blood which is not being pushed out will get backed up inside the lungs and therefore the pressure, blood pressure, pulmonary blood pressure inside the lungs will increase. So that may lead to breathing difficulty. So that is one of the main key symptom of progressive diastolic heart failure. But if your echocardiography report shows a mild or a grade 1 
left ventricular diastolic dysfunction that is nothing to be worried about because it's very common after a certain age to have a certain amount of relaxation abnormality and that relaxation abnormality grade 1 does not need any treatment usually does not lead to any symptoms and will not have any problems but it can certainly progress to grade 2 grade 3 grade 4 and lead to heart failure diastolic heart failure therefore that condition certainly needs monitoring so you might have to repeat your echocardiography test after six months or one year and you have to look into your risk factors what exactly might be causing this diastolic heart failure or relaxation abnormality so let's see what are the causes of diastolic relaxation abnormality of the left part of the heart the first cause the first and most common cause is high blood pressure what happens due to high blood pressure because high blood pressure means that your heart has to pump against the increased blood pressure that means it has to work harder if it has to work harder what will happen your heart muscles will try to thicken build up become more and more in size if they are increasing in size they can get stiff their size increases so the cavity the inner capacity decreases both of these things lead to diastolic failure diastolic dysfunction so first and most common reason is blood pressure second reason diabetes in diabetes also the heart muscles can thicken and therefore lead to stiffness third most common reason is obesity and fourth inactivity both these things if you are very obese if you are inactive what happens whenever you work your body has to lift up the heavier weight or your body is not accustomed to heavy work that's why your heart has to work harder and there is a lot of pressure on your heart therefore your heart will get thickened it will try to get more and more mass so that it can pump more but as it becomes thicker it becomes stiffer and the cavity size increases so obesity inactivity diabetes hypertension all are the risk factors the reasons then CAD coronary artery disease heart ischemia that means if there is a blockage in a certain part and the blood supply to a certain part of your heart that part can become damaged and that damage can lead to stiffening of that part sometimes it becomes thinner sometimes it becomes dilated and all these things can lead to diastolic failure so it's not necessary that diastolic failure will happen only if your heart muscles are thickened it can become thin it can dilate it can get ballooned so a lot of things can cause problems here but all these things are the reasons what will happen if your heart becomes stiff or if your left part of the heart has a problem during relaxation if you have diastolic heart failure what symptoms will you have we have seen that the pressure inside the lungs can increase because of backup of the blood in the lungs that can lead to shortness of breath then similarly the pressure in the right side of the heart can increase which can then transmit the pressure in all the veins of the body and therefore significant if you have more and more significant grades of diastolic dysfunction slowly you will develop swelling in the legs so you will develop edema then slowly you can have cough or because of the lung problem then you can have uh, fatigue weakness tiredness you can have uh, palpitations and you can even have dizziness so all these might be symptoms and indications that your diastolic dysfunction is increasing your heart is falling into diastolic heart failure then how do you diagnose it the most important biggest test is echocardiography Secondly, we can do an ECG, we can do routine blood tests, chest x-rays and sometimes we have to do an angiography, cardiac catheterization to see for a blockage in the arteries or before that we can go for a stress test, a stressed echocardiography test or other kinds of stress tests. So all these tests have to be done 
to diagnose the complete scenario so that a proper treatment plan can be asserted. If there is no other abnormality except diastolic heart failure, then the basic treatment would be something like this. Now remember, if you have a mild problem, if you have grade 1 diastolic dysfunction, you don't need any treatment and you just need monitoring repeated echocardiographies after a year or 6 months or something like that depending upon your doctor's recommendations. But if you have moderate to severe diastolic dysfunction, in that case, you will need treatment. But the most important thing to understand is no treatment can reverse the diastolic dysfunction. The diastolic dysfunction, once it happens, it is permanent. It cannot be reversed. The only thing you can do by treatment is relieve your symptoms and decrease the pressure on the heart and the lungs so that you become comfortable. And you can try that this diastolic dysfunction does not increase further or does not progress by managing the baseline cause of it. So what can you do? Most important thing, treatment includes diuretics. That means water pills, medications that increase your urination so that the blood volume decreases. That's how the pressure in the pumping system, the pressure in the left side of the heart, the lungs, the right side of the heart, it decreases, relieving the symptoms. The second treatment would be managing blood pressure and heart rate. If your blood pressure is high, that is a problem. If the heart rate is very high, your heart is working very fast, so that is a problem. So you have to manage that. Then you have to manage the risk factors. Diabetes, if you are obese, if you are inactive, so you have to have a healthy diet, a healthy lifestyle, decrease salts, decrease oils and fried foods and bad junk foods. You might need to take blood thinners if there is a risk of coronary artery disease or you have a risk of clots then what else you need to do you need to exercise regularly so that your heart is accustomed to some work and your overall weight is managed reduce your weight and decrease salt intake and stop smoking stop alcohol intake stop bad habits so all these things have to be done but remember guys, if you don't do all these things, if you don't manage diastolic heart failure in time and it increases to a severe case, then there is no other treatment. There is no treatment to reverse that. Only thing which you can do is if other systems are normal, you can go for a heart transplant or else you don't have anything else to do. So guys, that's all about diastolic heart failure. If you have any questions about this, don't forget to jot them out in the comment section. We are here to answer your queries and if you like the videos, do share it, subscribe our channel, hit the bell icon and till the next time, stay connected, stay healthy. Don't forget to look for other videos on my channel.